Hello, I'm Richard Chambers, the Senior Internal Audit Advisor for Audit Board. Welcome to another in my continuing series, Agents of Change, in which I interview leading practitioners in internal audit and risk management. I'm really honored to be joined today by Liz Sandwith, a, a longtime colleague and a friend uh, from the UK. Liz has a deep background in internal audit and previously served as the Chief Audit Executive of Channel 5, which is a broadcasting TV broadcasting company here in the UK. Liz, thank you for joining me today. Thank you very much, Richard. I'm delighted to be here. Liz, you and I have compared notes on a number of occasions about the journey uh, that we've had uh, professionally and the journey of this, this uh, profession of internal audit. And I think we both observed that over the course of our careers, we've seen uh, internal audit change a lot. Um, uh, the, the nature of the profession, uh, from the days we entered, it's very different today. And one of the things that I think makes it different is there is increasingly an expectation uh, by internal audit stakeholders that they, they not only help protect value, uh, but they also get out there and help create value. Are you seeing that uh, from where you sit? Yes, I, I think that's a, a really good perspective. Um, I couldn't help but smile when you said how it had changed. I, I remember the first audit I did being given a pile of 250 invoices and, a, and an orange pen and told to check them. I think any internal audit today, any internal audit function would turn their nose up at that. So yes, it's changed a lot. And it's more around the seat at the top table for the CAE. It's more around demonstrating the real value we bring to the profession and being respected, and, and I use the word respect a lot because I think that makes us a trusted advisor. It means that the CEO or the chair of the audit committee will come to us and ask us for support, help, advice, guidance. And respect isn't given as a right. It is something that an internal audit function and a CAE has to earn. And I think that's some of the shift I've certainly seen. Yeah. No, I, I think you're right. Uh, you know, we, we always often talk about, uh, you know, a seat at the table requires us to earn and sustain the trust that goes with that. You know, as I think about the change that the profession has been through, um, I, I'm also thinking about the fact that uh, internal auditors are increasingly being called upon uh, to be change agents in the in, in the roles they play. Um, in my book that I published in 2021, I, I wrote about change agents or agents of change, and I said that, that internal audit agents of change are those who are catalysts for transformational ideas that create value for the organizations they serve. Does that sound like a role for, to you that internal audit should play? Absolutely. And I think as well, it's a role that internal audit is playing more at the moment because, you know, if you think back over the last two years and probably even slightly before the pandemic hit, internal audit was perhaps seen as, you know, they're over there in the corner, they're doing some great work, but we're not really seeing how they fit into the organisation. And then over the last two years, we've had internal auditors being deployed into areas of the business to help the business, you know, new initiatives, uh, new processes, giving real-time assurance, helping the business deliver these things. And I've even heard, you know, some heads of internal audit say they've had to fight to get their auditors back out of first line because suddenly the business is seeing this real value that internal audit can bring. So... I think, you know, and I know it's a, a bit of a cliche and everybody says it, but, you know, they say, don't they, never let a good crisis go to waste. And I think this crisis we've had, and forgive me about, you know, all of the sadness and impact of all that, and I'm not in any way uh, playing that down, but it has driven internal audit forward in a way that I think will probably have taken us five, ten, maybe even longer years to get there. So great work that internal audit's doing at the moment but there's more to do. You know, you, you touched on something there that has sort of long been a, a source of, of some controversy, and that is t how, how, how much internal audit should ever step into the business, how, how much uh, they should play a role. Now, I've been one who said um, 
there, there are extraordinary circumstances in which internal audit needs to pitch in and do what it can to help the organization get through a crisis. I certainly felt that way about this, uh, the pandemic. Um, for those who might say, oh, we can't ever do any first line work because then our independence is compromised, objectivity is compromised. What, what's your reaction to that? I think, um I quoted you um, when we first started doing our Heads of Internal Audit virtual forum, so April 2020. You know, one of the, the first uh, conversations we had was around internal audit independence. And, you know, there were a lot of heads of audits doing their arms folded. No, 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 we can't possibly get involved in that. We're internal audit. We have to, you know, manage our independence. And actually, no, because there's no point being independent in an organisation that no longer exists. So I quoted you and you talked about, in one of your blogs, about independence and don't hide behind a wall of independence and roll your sleeves up and help the future sustainability of your organisation. And that's so important. Yeah. And I think we both agree that it's not a permanent or long-term role, but there are times where you just have to be there to lend a helping hand Absolutely. if you have that expertise. Yes. So we talk about internal auditors as change agents. Um, do you think boards and, and CEOs and the C-suite, are they seeing internal audit in that role? You see a lot of companies, a lot of leading companies. What, do you, what is your sense of how they see internal audit right now? I think there is a, a shift and in seeing internal audit more in that space. I think it's a bit slower shift from your C-suite, your board, in, in the UK it would be your audit committee, than perhaps one might wish. Um, because there is, uh, you know, sometimes some confusion and lack of real appreciation in terms of what internal audit can really bring to the table. And I think some of that is um, influenced by the fact that some CAEs now have their seat at the top table and say nothing. So they're there in the room but don't speak. So the perception and the confusion that that creates is difficult for C-suite, for your CEO, and also sometimes for your audit committee and board to appreciate. So my advice, my conversations with CAEs is, you know, we fought long and hard to get this seat at the top table. Don't, don't, waste the opportunity. You're there. Contribute to the success of the organization. Cost efficiencies, cost constraints, better practice, efficiencies, all of those things are within our remit. Why are we not sharing those? That's right. That's, that's the, the value that internal audit harbors um, sort of in, in, in the back room sometime is the knowledge about risk and controls in the organization that's often accumulated over decades of work. And, uh, and there's no value to the organization if that just stays in our work paper files. Yes, you're, you're absolutely right. We need to articulate it. We need to be out there talking to people, um, having regular conversations. Um, and one of the things that we pushed very much in the UK and Ireland um, in the early part of the pandemic was why are you not talking to your audit committee, your chair, maybe daily, weekly? The world is changing so fast. Don't go, yeah, but we only have a quarterly meeting. No, pick up the phone, talk to them. Find out what they're looking for from you and how you can support them in terms of the assurance that you're providing, what's keeping them awake at night, but also, you know, how can we be more innovative in what we're doing? So then came the one-page reports, reports that are issued within 48, 72 hours of completion of field work, not six, eight, ten weeks down the path. So lots of opportunity there. And I think that opportunity is still evolving because I think some of the C-suite, your board, your audit committee, your CEO, are still testing the water on that with internal audit. Yeah, so, so you, you make a great point, Liz. I, I And when you're talking about the importance of modernizing the approaches that we take. I make the point in the book that, um, that in order to be seen as credible uh, change agents within our organizations, we have to be seen as willing to change ourselves. And, and that includes 
uh, be, becoming more efficient, more effective, using more technology. Do you, do you see it the same way? I do, absolutely. And, and I, you know, I've quoted you speaking at our conference in 2019 when you talked about internal audit methodology not changing for 15, 20 years. And actually, now is the time. The, the pandemic gave us that real opportunity to change. But, but it's not just about, oh, we'll change our methodology or we'll do a shorter report. But actually, being honest with you know, what's going on. You know, a CAE saying, do you know what, Audit Committee, I can't give you an assurance around climate because I'm learning about that myself at the moment. So, you know, instead of being assumed that, you know, everything is about process and about procedures, actually recognising that some of the new risks coming down the track are going to highlight gaps in internal audit knowledge that we are going to have to upskill for. But be honest with your audit committee. Do you know what? I, I'm not comfortable doing that because we don't have the skill set. Yeah. But I have a solution. I have a way to get that skill set to give you that assurance. That's right. Sometimes being a change agent is, is bringing in someone else to help you drive yes. the change. Yeah, and being honest. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So in, in the book, uh, bef before we wrote the book, we did some research. We talked to 600 chief audit executives from around the world, and we asked them, Basically, what does it take to be a successful change agent in internal audit? And there were four key themes that emerged. You've got to have strong business acumen. You've got to be strong at relationships. You have to, be, you have, to have a strategic mindset, and you have to be innovative. Do you think that captures it? Are there other things that you would add to that list? I, I think that captures it. One of the things I hear a lot from audit committees is that um, internal audit really doesn't understand the business. So commercial acuity is something that's desperately needed. So instead of internal audit being a bit blinkered and just thinking about this is my organization, AN whatever, AN associates, actually what sector do I sit in? What geographical location am I in? Do I have a footprint elsewhere? What does that mean? Do I understand territorial legislation, territorial re regulations? How does that impact here? And where are we going to balance ourselves to be able to provide the assurance to the audit committee? Um, so I, I think commercial acuity, absolutely fundamental. And I think, unfortunately, a number of CEAs don't have that. They think they understand the business, but actually they don't really understand the business. So for me, that would be a, you know, way out in front as, a, as a, an upskilling requirement for all CAEs. I might say that I think a lot of them understand where the business has been, but they need to understand where the business is going. That's a really good point, yes. Very good. Yeah. Listen. Thank you so much for doing this. Oh, I do have one last question for you, though. What do you think uh, could happen to this profession in the next decade? What would you say? It's going to be a very bumpy ride. Mm -hmm. So I think even before the, the war in Ukraine, we had inflation, supply chain issues, fuel shortage, all sorts of, you know, the great resignation, all of those sorts of challenges that everybody said, we're not going to go away. We're not talking six months here. We're talking two, three years. So I think the internal audit needs to be horizon scanning. We need to be looking ahead. We need to be brave in terms of what the conversation are we're having with our board. We think this is coming down the track and we think this is what you need to be mindful of. If you don't, there are risks associated to your future sustainability. And sometimes we need to call out the car crash we see coming mm -hmm. um, and be brave. Yes. Liz, thank you so much for joining me today and for, for being brave enough to share your thoughts uh, with our audience. Um, I think this profession has been on an amazing journey. I think there's a lot of great potential out there. And, I hope that uh, you're going to be one of those who's been a, who will continue to be a champion for our profession as we go forward. Thank you, Richard. That was wonderful, and I enjoyed it. And hopefully, you know, what I've said it resonates. Yeah. Thank you. I'm uh, Richard Chambers, uh, the Senior Internal Audit Advisor for Audit Board. Uh, thank you for joining us on this session uh, with my good friend Liz Sandwith, and uh, be an agent of change. <laughs>